religious people and scientists have often created conflicts that didn't need to be there, that were more artificial than real. Here he is on that, on the Bible and science. Take right. a listen. Well, you have to remember that neither science nor religion is just a big book of facts, a big book of things. When people imagine a conflict, they're thinking that, well, there's a bunch of things you believe in science and a bunch of things you believe in, in religion, and what happens if the two things don't agree? But science isn't things. Science is the conversation about the things. Religion isn't a bunch of facts or a bunch of rules. It's how we understand and deal with these rules. You know, the real challenge I get is not when science disagrees with religion, but when science disagrees with science, where I've got two different things that my scientific research has unveiled, and they don't seem to fit together. That's when you get really excited and you learn something brand new you wouldn't have known before. Okay, complex issues, and um, you've, you've really argued for a, a really sense of personal humility as we tackle these big questions of life. Why? Uh, I think everybody naturally uh, wants to feel significant. You know, it's, we're, we're, we're uh, by nature uh, kind of uh, uh, an isolated being. You know, the best that we can do is look into somebody's eyes and maybe give somebody a hug and have a conversation and try and share what it is to be human. But, but fundamentally, we're, we're very much separate just by our, our physicality. And so, therefore, um, the sense of eternity, the sense of, uh, of desire to feel that your particular spark of life matters is really important to each of us. And, uh, and so people... It's amazing how people manifest that sometimes. You know, the, the end is coming, holding up the sign. People want their 85 years on Earth to be the most significant in the history of the planet, which, which it's really common, but it's kind of funny. And the, the lengths that people will go to, they'll build pyramids, they'll build ziggurats, they'll build uh, all sorts of structures to try and give themselves significance. And um, I wish they could get on board the spaceship with me and go around a hundred times and really see the proportion of how we fit in. We are significant. We're immensely significant to ourselves, of course. Um, we're significant to the people that are around us. And some of the things we can do can, can have a significance, uh, positive or negative, on others. But if you only see your little myopic part of it, it's really hard to get that right. And I think the the uh, privilege of seeing the whole world over and over and over again, and not just the world, but everybody, and how we all fit together. I think the, the shared sense of humanity comes with an unavoidable feeling of humility and, and, an, and an endlessness of the time and age that puts your 85 years into its correct perspective. It's not insignificant, but it's just 85 years in a four and a half billion year planet and a 13 and a half billion year universe that fundamentally we don't know where it came from, or where it's going. So, so I think um, that, that uh, perspective it's part of the reason I wrote both books. It's why I took all those pictures. It's so people can maybe look beyond their, their slightly panicked local horizons and maybe get a true sense of who they are and feel that both the, the shared commonality of it and the humility that ought to come with that.